In our previous video, we covered the Meta Kiar Dual Blade builds. Those builds are going to be the highest DPS option you have for Dual Blades. Dual Blades did, after all, benefit the most out of every weapon class from the introduction of the Kiara weapons. Excluding the grossly overtuned ICB. But we know not everyone has managed to farm ATKT enough to get all of these juicy Kiara Dual Blades. So, if you don't have the Kiar Dual Blades, what are the next best option for Max Deeps? Well, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And we're... The, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math, Math guys. guys. And this is Meta DB Builds non Kiar Dual Blades. In this video, we'll be covering the non Kiar Dual Blade sets. If you have the Kiar Dual Blades and want to know what those sets look like, check out our previous video, link at the top right. We're going to be covering a lot of sets in this one. That's because most of the second best dual blades are still the old Katie dual blades. But we know that most of you don't have those yet, so where it's appropriate, we'll be covering the best craftable ones. As always, I want to start off with a quick disclaimer. All the builds, analysis, breakdowns, and everything we do on the channel are not meant to tell you how to play. Unless you are a speedrunner or care about Max Deeps, these are not the only way to play and we are not suggesting that. The purpose of what we do is to educate and inform. And the specific purpose of this series is to give you factual information on the mathematically highest damage builds. It's to educate you on the relative strengths of build choices, playstyles, and skill choices so you can make informed decisions. If you have more fun using Evade Window or Palico Pokemon builds, more power to you. Play how you like and enjoy yourself, it is a video game after all. As we mentioned in the previous video, Dual Blades are an elemental matching weapon. You get the most damage out of matching the elemental damage of your weapon to the monster's primary weakness. So we'll be covering the builds for every single element so you can deal max deeps no matter what the matchup. Let's start with the dragon builds. The next highest damage dragon option is Zeriel, otherwise known as the Siri Daggers from the Witcher collaboration event. Before we discuss this build fully, I do want to note one thing. See the armor in this build? Wrath Chest with Azure Star Lord Waste for Crit Element and everything else Kaiser Gama for Master's Touch? Get very used to seeing this. Every single non kiar elemental dual blade build runs this exact set with the decos and charms switched around. Before Kiar existed, this set was the Metahemoth for dual blades. And post Kiar dual blades, Metahemoth was the Metahemoth of dual blades. This set was the only way to get crit element, master's touch, and as high an affinity as possible all in one package. The only time this changes is for fire DBs which run the Rathalos waste instead for the free 2 points of fire attack, which we'll discuss in a moment. Also, due to the simple lack of affinity and white sharpness in a lot of these builds, you generally didn't have the space to run health augments pre kiar Dual Blades. You could, but doing so made it very likely you'll hit blue sharpness during a hunt due to lower affinity, and that's a big damage drop. The builds were simply inefficient because the crit element armor pieces are inefficient, and you also had to run 3 free elements in almost all of the builds. There are definitely going to be some exceptions to this as you'll see in the upcoming builds, but for the most part, health augment costs you a lot of damage over the course of a hunt. Alright, history lesson over, let's talk about the build. So not only do these dual blades have a sexy effect when you demon dash, but they have extremely nice natural white sharpness, which actually kind of makes them an exception to the no health augment thing we just discussed. Between the free level of handicraft and the waste piece, as well as the 30 units of natural white, you have a total of 40 units of white. As we mentioned in the previous video, all dual blades have an innate razor sharp and only lose sharpness every third hit. So this translates to 120 hits of white sharpness combined with master's touch and 93% affinity with agitator active and you aren't hitting blue for a long time. Which does give you some wiggle room to run a health augment instead of an affinity augment if you want to. Now this buffer is nice because most of the dragon weak matchups in the game have you striking non-weak points at certain times during the hunt. For example, when you fight Wrath Family monsters you try to get trips on them, but their legs aren't weak points so this can affect your crits and therefore sharpness. On Devil Joe and Behemoth, it's very easy to whiff their weak points while trying to hit them with dual blades. TLDR, this white sharpness buffer is very nice too. You can change the Agitator Deco to a Dragon Deco, but that only gains you 10 Dragon Attack. And with the way rounding works, this won't even necessarily get you one extra point of damage per hit, so we personally think Agitator is more worth it. At 490.79 EFR and 44.74 EFE, this is a very hard hitting build. And because it is not peak reliant like the Kiar Dragon build, it's a good option if you simply don't like playing with peak performance. 
Also, yes, before you explode in the comments, I did say in the previous video that the previously best dragon dual blades were the Joe dual blades. That statement was correct. The Witcher collaboration came out after ATKT did, so while this is the second best dragon dual blades, the Joe dual blades was the best when ATKT came out. So please, no bully in comments. Now you do need a release deco for this set, which is pretty rare. If you don't have one or Zerial, your next best option are the Joe Dual Blades. At 475.33 EFR and 320.67 EFE, this set does deal less raw and dragon damage than Siri. And even though this set does run 50 units of white, so 150 hits of white sharpness, it has less affinity as well. At 25% chance to lose sharpness every hit, this build takes around 600 hits on average to hit blue sharpness, assuming you always hit weak spots. That's not easy on most dragon weak matchups. And if you want to run a health augment, your affinity goes down even more. While it is possible to fit attack boost 4 into this set for more EFR and 5% more affinity, you do this by trading out the handicraft deco and charm for an attack deco and charm. This leaves you with 30 hits of white sharpness. At 80% affinity, that's only 150 hits on average until you hit blue sharpness, in which case you'll most likely need to reset on RNG. In our opinion, this set isn't worth it. Despite the fact that it gives you more EFR to run attack boost 4, the risk of blue sharpness is not worth it. Alright, next up we have the Fire builds. So the second best Fire Dual Blades builds is with the Tarith Dagger's Rage. As I mentioned earlier, the Fire Dual Blades use the Rathalos Waste for the free fire attack. Unfortunately, these Dual Blades cannot hit white, but the same as the Kiar Rage Dual Blades, they don't really need to. Both of these Rage Dual Blades are based off the Anja Dual Blades, and all Anja weapons are giant stat sticks with huge base stats. At 446.69 EFR and 42.16 EFE, these dual blades don't need your white sharpness. At 40 units of natural blue, therefore 120 hits of blue and 80% affinity, these take 600 hits on average to hit green. Which is plenty against any fire weak matchup in the game. If you don't have the Katie Rage dual blades, your next best option is the Anja Cyclone. The set for this swaps a fire deco for an attack deco. The Rage dual blades are exactly the same as the Anja dual blades, except they have higher stats. These higher stats include higher base fire, so the Rage Dual Blades are able to use a third level of fire attack. Next up we have the Ice and Water builds. We'll use Teroth Dagger's Ice and Water respectively, and since the stats are the same, we'll be using the same sets, just different elemental decos. Here we have our recommended build, the Handicraft 4 set. At 90% affinity without a health augment and 90 hits of white sharpness, you get 900 hits until you lose white on average, assuming you hit only weak spots. That's a pretty nice buffer and gives you a lot of room for mistakes. And if you'd like to run a health augment, you can drop down 80% affinity and have 450 hits of white. Which isn't bad, except you miss a little bit of damage from repeated non-crits. But there is a glaring issue with these builds. You need three f***ing release decos. If, like me, you were a dual blade player back when Teostra Gamma armor leaked initially, you probably remember your ass clenching when you realize a new meta sets required three f***ing release decos. But if you are a lucky bastard like me, you got your third one literally the day before ATTO dropped on console. Pog. Fear not though, there is a solution, albeit kind of a shit solution. Change up the charm and you can fit a third level of crit boost in exchange for losing two handicraft. This does mean you need one release deco still and a handicraft deco, but at least you don't need three whole release decos. Technically, this build deals more damage. In fact, in our Kiara Dual Blades builds video, we mentioned that the Tarith Ice and Water did outdamage the Kiara versions by a marginal amount. This is the build that outdamages them by, like, 2%. However, 10 units of white sharpness, so therefore 30 hits of white sharpness and 90% affinity without a health augment, you're looking at 300 hits on average to hit blue sharpness, assuming you only hit weak points. If you whiff on weak points, it takes about 50 non-weak point hits to hit blue sharpness. So that's not great. Doable if you are insanely clean and willing to reset for crit RNG. If you don't have either of these, your best option for water dual blades is the Teroth Meyer dual blades. These actually have 18.59 more EFR than the build we just showed you, but it has 7.81 less EFE, which is enough to make it marginally weaker than the Teroth Dagger's water. However, it gets to run a health augment, has 100% affinity, and no pesky handicraft or release decos in the set. So definitely the comfiest option of all. If you don't have that, then the best craftable water dual blades are the Giora Hatchets. The set for these changes slightly from the Mire since they have 10% less affinity but get one more augment. Because of this, they sacrifice a level of handicraft and crit boost to run attack boost 4, which brings them back to 100% affinity. 
at least if you want to run a health augment. This build actually puts them at less than 1 EFR lower than the Maya DBs, which is not bad at all. Ironically, despite Jira being a literal punching bag of a monster, the Jira hatchets were the second best base game craftable dual blades. After the Andra dual blades, because they're fucking stat sticks. Finally, if you don't have the Tarath Ice Daggers, the next best Ice Dual Blades is the Freeze Chains. Despite being the coolest looking Dual Blades in the game, these Ice Chain Swords are pretty meh numbers wise. Compared to the Jira Hatchets we just looked at, they have lower raw and much lower elements, but also need one less handicraft to hit whites. The build is still exactly the same, we just switch out the elemental attack decos and swap out our handicraft deco for a crit boost deco. This makes up for some of the raw difference and gives this build a nice 460.15 EFR, but at 30.38 EFE it's easy to see why this is very underpowered. Still, it's what you got. Now you're probably wondering why freeze chains instead of fire and ice. Well, other than the fact that the freeze chains look way cooler, fight me! It's because the Fire and Ice has a unique mechanic that is cool, but ultimately makes them not very good. The Fire and Ice Dual Blades take the concept of dual blades way too seriously, because one of the blades deals ice and the other one deals blast damage exclusively. This means you only apply ice damage every other hit and the same for blast buildup. So what this effectively means is that even though the ice element is 240, you're only applying the 240 ice every other hit. In other words, you half that to do 120 ice on average. This gets even worse when you consider the ice attack value only goes up by a normal amount and is therefore half as skill efficient for damage output. In other words, let's say you slot in two ice attack decos to take it from 240 ice to 300 ice. But because you only apply half of that on average, it goes from 120 to 150 effectively. So you only gain 30 points of increase instead of 60, and the same applies to Blast. This just makes it very inefficient as far as skills to damage ratio is concerned. But what about the Blast damage? Even if it's only applying half the Blast on average, do the Blast procs make up the damage difference? The answer is... I don't know. Answering that question frankly takes a lot more calculations and testing than I am willing to invest into this. It's going to be dependent on a lot of factors, the ice hit zone value of the particular matchup, the total HP and blast build up values of the matchup, the amount of blast procs you actually get, the DPS uptime because blast decays over time, just to name a few. So if you want to use fire and ice for aesthetic sake because you have poor taste, go ahead and just slot it into the same build. At the end of the day, they're both fairly inefficient, so the difference will be marginal. Finally, we have the Thunder Dual Blades. The best non kr Thunder Dual Blades are the ZZ Dual Blades, the Dual Destroyers. If this set looks familiar, it's because it's the exact same as the Teroth Ice and Water Dual Blades. Just change out the elemental decos to Thunder. Unlike those builds, the Dual Destroyer hits 100% affinity, meaning you can get away with not running Handigraph 4. But if you want to run a Health Augment, this drops your affinity down to 95. In that case, we'd recommend using the Handigraph 4 version instead. Both of these sets do require release decos to work. If you don't have any, your next best option is the old KD Spark. These are weaker than the Dual Destroyers, but they also have a lot more white sharpness. These do hit 105% affinity on weak points, which gives you 55% affinity on non-weak points, so the sharpness goes for a lot longer. And no pesky release decos needed. Now, if you don't have the Tarath or Kiar Spark, and you don't have release decos for the Dual Destroyers build, you're kinda sh** out of luck. You can take the Kirin or Tobikadachi Dual Blades and slot them into the Tarath Spark build, but both of these are very weak options. So weak in fact, you're generally better off running Blast, Raw, or Poison Dual Blades depending on the matchup. Most Thunder Weak monsters actually have very low actual Thunder weaknesses like Nogagante for example. Despite having a 3 star weakness, his actual hit zone value on his white spikes for Thunder is only 15, about half of what it normally is on a 3 star monster. In fact, normally a 1 to 2 star weakness is a 15 hit zone value. On top of that, just in terms of pure raw stats, Thunder weapons have always had the worst stats in Monster Hunter World. Alright, that about does it guys. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. The video ended up quite a bit longer than normal because we wanted to make sure we included the craftable options as well into the video. And yes, we didn't cover the raw blast or poison DBs options in this video because, well, they're extremely niche. Like, worth using against 2-3 to three monsters niche. For poison DBs, this is going to be Legiana and Kushala de Aura, and for raw and blast, that's Nergigante. Yes, raw and blast are only good against one monster. But if those builds are something you're interested in seeing, let us know in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like the video and leave a comment if you just enjoy the content. It really does help a lot with the algorithms and whatnots. If you're looking for somebody to hunt with, consider our Discord server The Mathalos Nest.
You can check me out on Twitch where I stream Monster Hunter and other games almost every day. And you can also follow us on Twitter where we post updates to the channel and other things that interest us. Shout out to Honey at HoneyHuntersWorld.com for providing the tools we use to make sets. And a very special thank you to our patrons, MC Persona, Ferrey, Exponage, Yoshi Cho, David Sternberg, XCLK07, Heika, Milky Powder, John Cowan, Wyron Kios, Wed Manticore, Lithobully, Robin, Bram Orsel, Anti Spartan, Chris Porth, Lightweight, Skylar Yang, Checklum, Lupin, Mongus, Zimv, Triple Agent, Billy Barthel, Reaper Time, Jamie, and everyone else on the Patreon who's been supporting us. The patrons have chosen Gunlance for the next meta sets, so be sure to look out for those. If you'd like to help choose the next meta set, consider donating on Patreon. Our current choices are the new Kiar Bows or the new Kiar Charge Blades. If you made it this far, thank you again. We'll see you in the next one. Happy hunting, hunters. Bye. Bye.